back, everybody. Welcome back to the canyon. Welcome back to another in the hopefully long line of junk views. Uh, for better or for worse, uh, we've got upside downside. This is not an Amazon junk view. This is an Ally Express junk view provided to me, sent directly from mainland China by way of Belgium. I want to say Belgium. Uh, China by way of Belgium, directly from Ally Express. I mean, I guess if I had to pick something that they were closest to, a, a BFG crawler, they're not exactly a crawler, but they're they're close. They're close enough. Uh, they are all terrain crawler, and you might notice that hole might look a little uh, big to you. That's a two point two, and nowadays, uh, also you might notice it looks fairly uh, like it's a it's a little big, it's a tiny little bit, tiny 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 bit. Uh, the two point two in a normal size is becoming increasingly uncommon, it seems, except in the sort of knockoff stuff. The only other one I can think of is Pitbull Brave and Berserkers are about five inches, much like how a Vanquish VXT2 is over five inches. So a 2.2 in this size, before we get to the specifics of this tire individually, can have some, some upsides. Can, that that can give us some possible upsides because we've got we've got less sidewall, so we're going to a little bit lower of a profile tire, and a little bit low profile of a tire means that we don't have to worry about the sidewall collapsing as much because there's less sidewall to collapse. This is much like why people will put a two point two rim in uh, uh, stretch a one point nine undo a two point two rim, brings the sidewall down. Sidewall doesn't tend to roll over as much. These. Uh, fall into a, an odd place. Here is the included foam. Like for frame of reference, here's a 1.9 foam. Uh, I want to say they just included some 1.9 foams. And they are a little on the firm side, but not so firm that I would say we can't do this. They have kind of the memory foam feel to them. Uh, I think that this is a foam that would honestly... Like, they'll kind of maintain shape. They would kind of break in a little bit better than some of the other single stages. So, like I say, in quick, in junk view terms, if a foam just feels awful, we don't use it. And we've had many instances of Amazon tires having foams that are rock hard. And these are, I would put them most closely to, like, what comes in a canyon trail. This is like a stock canyon trail. Uh, level of density so it sh and it, they're not they're not super fragile like they don't tear you get some of those foams that are so stiff to the point where they're, they're almost fragile fragile these are not that so we're gonna let them run now if they were too firm which they may indeed be if they prove to be too firm as i showed like this is a dura tracks like you could just put that in there just stretch it over. It would stretch a little over, and then you'd have a medium. Or I've got Jetco's. I've got I got crazy crawler softs. I got crazy crawler mediums. We could do hair buns. The only thing we can't do is a double bun, because uh, I don't uh, I don't think it's possible to squeeze that closed cell uh, blue inner over over a two point over over this. Right. I mean, uh, we we have to frame it for reference. So this is, this is a 1.9 beadlock ring and there's a 2.2. So I don't think we're fitting a closed cell over that. So we are going to put these guys through the tire test protocol on their included foams because I don't think the foam is terrible, surprisingly. And uh, these things are like 19 bucks. They are non-directional and... In test mounting, and by test mounting, I mean mounting the other three, uh, they are not bubble juice required. Bubble juice will make it easier to mount any wheel. 
I would I would go so far as to say. These, you just get it over like the little rim protector section. And as long as you're not giving it too much, too much gusto, uh, it won't, it won't pop the bead out. And because these are 2.2s, there's another little advantage over 1.9s pretty much across the board. They mount easier. It's just easier to get one of these on. It's nearly impossible to find a set of 2.2s that are six bolt backs. And I don't mean the SLW, I mean the actual bolts that hold the two halves together. They're like all five bolt. I prefer a six bolt, it's easier to mount. But because 2.2s are so easy to mount, and, oh yeah, another a hidden advantage, advantage you might not have considered. For test purposes, we use, we use baseline because he do. This is a brand new set of 2.2s because we in the Canyon fleet have a grand total of two we have a grand total of two three we have three rigs running 2.2s but one of them is on custom send cut send wheels so we have two sets of 2.2 bead locks so i had to order a set and because these are 2.2s you'll notice that the 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 positive positive offset negative offset it's the opposite right so this is negative offset if it's all the way here it's negative and as you go that way it's positive so the negative offset, we only have a tiny bit of positive. If it was just mounted to the face, that's full negative, if my brain is working correctly. So I had to switch these to 14 millimeter hubs just to space it out to about normal. So if you were looking to decrease track width, which, I mean, I guess that's a thing. Somebody out there is trying to decrease track width, right? If you're looking to decrease track width, 2.2s, 2.2s will get you there. Because these were so far inside and uh, also uh you're, you're definitely gonna, not gonna have any like portal clearance issues so this is a 2.2 and much much unlike duratrax j concepts like a, this is a 1.9 tusk and a 2.2 tusk is like that they're like almost scx6 size same with ruptures a 1.9 rupture is well i can just do it where a 1.9 rupture looks like this and a 2.2 rupture looks like this. So this guy is about the size of a 1.9 rupture. I know that on the side, they say, I, I want to say that the Ally Express listing and the side of the tire say 4.72, 120 millimeter. And uh, we're, we're certainly past that. I'm, I'm looking at 124. Now, I think as these foams break down a little, you, yeah, you're going to land on 120. If I put like that amount of tension on it, it's at 120. So 123, 124, which is not grossly overstated. Yeah, 2.2, 120. They're a little bit over that. They claim 48 wide and they are 48 wide. So we're dead on there. 2.2 wheel, it's less tire, more metal. So let's see how dirty the scale is. Oh, pretty shirt. There we go. Didn't want to have to look for something to wipe that off with. So we throw these on there. 222. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, typically a 1.9 of the same size. Well, I mean, we kind of can. 188. Uh, who else we got? Oh, yeah. 174. So you're picking up 40 to 50 grams per corner uh, of unsprung. That's, that's nothing to sneeze at. I, I'm not opposed to that at all. Puts the full set of four, 888. Wow. What? 666? 668, 445, two, wait, 224. Yeah, 888. So that's, that's a fantastic consistency on the part of the people who both made the wheels. I had to search to find the cheapest. These were Amazon's cheapest 2.2 wheels. And actually, the machining quality is 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 really quite good. I, I don't have any complaints. I wish I didn't have to put these old crusty 14 millimeter offset hubs on them, but it was the only way we were gonna get them on there. So 222 grams, that's that's good. That's, that's where I like to be. I shoot for that 200 to 250. Usually I find that 250, 
250 to 300 is going to be situationally specific. And honestly, once you get up into the really tight 200s, like if you're closer to 300, uh, in my experience, you're, you're approaching or passing the point of diminishing returns, depending on how heavy the rig is. Like I, I, I've said many times, if you're not familiar, that we don't build lightweights here in the canyon. That's not... That's not exclusively true. Uh, when 888, so let's call it 900 grams, and this guy out, fully outfitted will be about 2,600 grams. A third of the weight of the vehicle is the wheels and tires. And uh, I like to be at at least a third of the weight of the vehicle being on the wheels and tires. Sometimes it's not possible. TRX-6, I'm looking at you. You have to put like solid brass wheels. And then again point of diminishing returns so controlling the overall weight of the vehicle is important if we can put a little bit of extra unsprung weight on there without overly taxing the system that's not a bad thing to do like you see the, these are just just a hair above four and three quarter right what are we looking at no they're yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i would call it like four and seven eighths so it should not impact too much. We should not get too many angry Lexan noises. They they are, however, wide. 48 wide. That's definitely 2.2 wide. So our contact patch is going to be up a bit. Like this is similar in width to like a 1.9 showdown, which is much shorter. Like a good a good good bit shorter in the 116 area. Now, is eight millimeters a lot? In some situations, it is. Like it looks like we're really filling out the fender well center. We're gonna see. We're gonna see how we fare on full fenders. But that's a big problem. Like this, I want to say this is the biggest set of full fender of, of tires he's tested in his full fendered mode. I did not want to hand it off to something else. I think he's done almost all the junk views. There might have been a, one or two junk views he's missed. But uh, we'll see. If we get into an interference issue, somebody will somebody will tap in and we'll go from there. But I think baseline's a goer. I think he's going to manage this. We're going to go through the Canyon Tire Test Protocol, 12 stations. We're going to see how these do. It's very dry. It's warm, so we're not going to get any wet weather uh, uh, comparisons here. But this is a $19 set of tires. And they do feel, they do feel sticky. Do they make noise? Whoa, look at this. They are very, they are very sticky. A little noisier than what we're accustomed to, but we will see. We've had good luck on junk views in the past. Will our luck continue? Are they sized in such a way uh, to make them look obscene? No, they don't look that out of place to me. As a matter of fact, baseline, if you'll remember there, uh, take a trip on the Wayback Machine with me, if you will. Uh, they kind of, he reminds me of a stomper. He looks, he's very stompery right now. Because four wheel drive means power. Uh, they're a little farty. I'm sure we're going to hear that. Uh, just the right amount of lug. Uh, someone in a video requested the helicopter. It sounds like it's coming this way. So uh, without further ado. A little, a little hesitant, but uh, that was that was over the bean, effectively. Tough side. I don't think it's gonna. Play. No, I think we can bump on though. Okay, now we'll see how this. Yeah, I I I feel like I'm feeling the foam a little bit. Yeah, a little pivot there around the rear end. Yeah, a little drop back. We generally don't want to see a cutback, but yeah, I think I think for the weight of this rig, I think the foam is a little dense. It's a little overly firm. Not a not a crushing deal breaker, particularly at eighteen dollars. And with them being that 123, 124 millimeters. You can just put any, you, you can put your selection of 1.9 foams. 
because the foam isn't even wide. Like the tire is wide, but the, the foam is definitely narrower. That's probably helping it out. Let's see if that ground clearance shows here. Yeah, I'm feeling just a, a little bit of a loss of drive because I think the tire isn't getting full chance to, to, to fold over. Now, uh, also, we're, we're hearing a little bit of the noises. Oh, I just, I just, I think the tire is not deflecting enough. Like the single stage is linear. So it's very uniform in how much rebound it's giving us and how much compliance that the actual compression of the foam. And I, I just don't think it's enough. So we're going to have to try to like ignore that and look at how the tire, like not a ton of lug noise. That's good. Uh, overly firm foam, which was, you know, suspected. But so far the tire is doing pretty good. And certainly in full fender terms, this is, this is a big tire. It's very small for a 2.2, but it, it is nonetheless a fairly big tire. Bit of lug noise there. I'm trying to get this without using the big bump up. This is an in-between the wheelbase section here where we kind of saw back and forth. There we go. Okay, that's, that's a decent, decently good approach. I can position. It's not completely helpless here. Okay, gonna go wide side. Do we have enough to pull it back? Yeah, the, the tire, it, we make it. So he's three for three. Uh, the tire is really being held back by that point. Which is, you know, excusable. If they charged us $18 and just gave us four tires with no foam in them, that'd be all right, I'd be okay with that. I kinda, on, on some level, I wish that every tire gave you the option to say, no foam, please. Give me a dollar off per tire and give no foam and, and I'll take it. Yeah, right there. If the rear could comply at all and then right here, if the front could comply at all. But the, the foam is... So we're going to see on the side hill. Uh, I don't think the sidewalls are going to roll I think what is going to happen is it's just going to transfer weight because it's it, he's going to be sitting too high. Like there won't be any compliance to the low side tire. Like I say, reality, prove me wrong. I get over this. Yeah, see, I know where to go. I go over here. I almost, I almost uh, set up for getting to do. This, this station, I almost, for, I almost forgot to do the crack. Little issues pulling up on side lug there. Yeah, we're not, we're not going to be able to get right because yeah, they're, they're, when we, the more, the steeper we get, uh, the more that really dense foam is showing itself. It's not the worst foam ever. But like I said, it's probably just a little too heavy. And for Baseline, who's a bit of a light boy, uh, they're, they're too heavy. I would claim that I'm going to uh, attempt to uh, keep my nomenclature consistent, whether I call it too dense or too heavy or too stiff or too firm. Nah, nah. We're a drunken thesaurus. The, you know, the deadliest of the dinosaurs. And uh, we're, we're going to call it what we call it in that moment. A lot of scrabble here. So is it just gonna slide? That's not bad. No, oh, that was a that was a good that was a fair bit of lateral there. Okay, so good so far. So dropping that rear. Now, how's the transfer gonna go? Use the fusion. Yeah, advantage um, super stiff foam. <laughs> advantage super stiff foam. Because everything's good at something. 
I have to get this set up a little further north than I would usually like it. So we're going to, instead of driving in off the dirt, we'll start up here on the, on the, on the bank here. Uh, I'm just trying to stay in the shade, you know. See that first pull? Eh, a little worse than average. But I think that's all foam because if we maneuver around and get the front end over, foam, foam, uh, the foam is really showing here. We might be too firm to not get on without a bump. Really showing here. Yeah, there's the compliance level. They felt firm, and I'm used to that, but like a double bun is firm, but doesn't rebound a lot. These are firm and rebound a lot, so we're getting some uh, negative energy unloadings. The lug is working. We have to consider this a scale tire, I'm guessing. Yeah, your bumps have to be long. There we are. A little tootie there. They're not... Uh, I, it's it's impossible to say uh, and and we're over halfway through it's becoming more and I, I thought it would be clearing itself by, up by now but it's becoming increasingly difficult to determine whether the shortcoming is the tire or the compound of the tire versus just the foam it, it this might bear a revisit here the, the tire, I mean, it's done. It has literally done everything. Yes, we had to use a bump in a spot we would ordinarily have to use a bump, but it, the tire is not failing catastrophically. And I don't hate them. Like, I, think, I think they look okay. Just be prepared for a lot of noise. So from here forward, I make no, I make no speculations about expectations. That does eight millimeters make a difference? It can. As is tradition, we go left side first. Yeah, that's that's really good. It did really good right there. Uh, maybe this is a wait for the foams to break down situation. I am impatient, so I would be more apt to just put something medium in it. I think these would work well on a foam that is just a straight medium. Like that, that little pirouette was wonderful. It was composed the whole way. But like on that drop, the nose should have compressed a bit. And I didn't, I didn't see any. Yeah, the, that's, that's the, the real weak spot is where you're pulling little tiny ledges. The tire is just not being allowed to do its work. The foam, the foam is too firm for this. So I mean, I guess the short-term response would be just put it on, slap it on something heavier. Like that's good. That's good. That went exactly where I wanted it to. Not only have these done everything asked of them, they've done it reasonably well. They're just a a bit oversized, and. <laughs> Sometimes that oversize pays off because usually getting a full width bumper and a full width, bo width body up over that uh, ledge, not as easy. Now let's see here. Yeah, it can, it, it can go. It will do the thing. It just needs, and now we try opposite cut. Are we gonna slide? No, not super agile. But them being, uh, uh, it, it, it seems to me that all of these uh, Chinese compounds, even the softer ones, yeah, ordinarily he can't breach that because he runs four six fives. <laughs> ordinarily he cannot get up onto that. 
So uh, all these Chinese compounds, they all seem to respond well to the beans, except for the ones that don't respond well to anything. You know, if the tire's got any grip. Okay, I thought for sure, I thought for sure we were gonna get more kick. But that, that bounce is low. Oh, there we go. And I think this lends to why we're not having just a, just an absolute crap fest here. The foam is not nightmarish. It's close. It's, a, it's almost acceptably close. If this guy weighed, honestly, I would say like a pound and a half. These foams would probably work for you if your rig was about seven pounds. Yeah, I can't, I can't get, because, because we have no rear compliance, so there's this, there's this rock right here, right there. You need to get driver front just on the side of that and then kind of walk that, that tire across that little breakage point right there. And it will pull the rear end around with it. But because of our lack of rear compliance, I can't really get into the, into the position. Okay, right there. That's, that's where we want to be for entry but then it just kind of shuttles. I'll try pulling it back. See, right there. All right, okay, I've, I've got to say. Uh, this, this, uh, hi, a light bulb, the moment. Uh, the tire is, the tire's pretty good. The tire's pretty good. It's not fake KLR good, but it's pretty good. And I don't know how much of that is the 2.2 nature of it, the fact that they're a little heavier. I think the compound is pretty good, not as good as the Enjora S3, but it is neither hapless nor hopeless. Oh, lizard. Straight up. Okay, we, we, do, the, we do the very easy, uh, little bit more packed down section so that we don't descend directly into sadness. Descent should be good, yes. Very rubble there. Okay, soft mush. Now these are wide. Moderate throttle here. Big throttle. Almost get there. I mean, who, who doesn't love that? Like, who couldn't just do, I, I know, it's not rock crawling, but it's fun. Like, that's fun. Like, I get it. I get why the shakes are down there with the, uh, you know, with 2,000 horsepower G-Wagons, right? Doing that. like. It's fun. I don't think it's a surprise that if you take your uh, your tire out to two inches wide, you have more contact patch. So we, uh, I get, I get it. Look at the dust coming off. We gotta get, gotta try to get some of that dirt out. There we are. So the compound, like I said, not an Injora S3, but. Decent. I'm actually stuck. Look, there's a little, there's a little bag there. Uh, so uh, that uh, another, add another question mark behind the foams. They might break down too fast. That is the tire with all the weight on it, but there was no squish at the beginning. And we've got squish already. It's been like 15 minutes. Like that's not enough time to build some squish up. So honestly, if you ran a full pack, just came out and ran it up. Ah. Is it a wait and see, or is it a just do? Man, I don't know. If your rig is heavier, you can get away with the foams. I would consider these, these are okay. These are, these are firmly okay. Where would I put them numerically? 86. That's, that's the, and I don't mean in terms of get them out of here. I mean, I would put them in an 86. As outfitted, I think with a different foam, Hair, single stage hair bun maybe? No, throw a little hair bun in there. I think we could be somewhere. 
but right there, the ability to, well, let's, let's, can we do it? Can we do the, the hustler move? Okay, the ability to do that right there, I don't think that has anything to do with the compound of the tire. I think the tire, the tread and the compound are trying everything that they can do. I think the foams are just too firm for this application, so they're not allowing the tread to work. Uh, cut the foams maybe I would just I would just I would replace the foams I wouldn't wait for them to break in unless I mean if your rig is heavy if you're a heavy okay now let me look now let me who think of who I'm talking about if you're uh if you're a brass man if you've been throwing the brass at it and your rig is like nine pounds these foams might be too soft for you if you're in this sort of like seven pound ish range these foams might work for you this guy's a little light for it When it does make the angry Lexan noises, that one, it sounds, it sounds bad. But it, I, I know, I know what it is now. Oh, and uh, a little, a little uh, add addition of temporality here so we know where it fell in the sequence. The gentleman fitted with the wheels right now just got a full teardown, full grease, diffs pulled out, all of his gears pulled out, everything checked because he had an incident somewhat recently and all I can figure is it was lugs on Lexan because it didn't, there was absolutely nothing wrong with him anywhere. He, he looks fine. So he's been all lubed and greased and he's running good and 2.2 uh, fake, I'm gonna call them crawlers for the thumbnail. They're gonna be fake crawlers. Uh, because that's that's what they're closest to. I would say they're 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 a, a reasonable facsimile of a BFG crawler. I realize this this shot blocking is horrible. So we'll move over here to where we will bid you adieu with the end of another junk view. This is the first junk view where I or uh, here's how it works. It's either terrible or it's much better than anticipated. Maybe I've done too many. Maybe I've done just enough. This tire did exactly as well as I thought it was going to. I thought the foam was going to hold it back, and it did. I think the tire, like, that's a 2.2. It looks absolutely fine. Uh, it's side-hilled well, as one would expect. The sidewall is shorter. We have more rim and less tire. It's like those new NASCAR rules. Uh... Yeah, and under 20 bucks. What's, what's, what's not to like? Like, I think they look fine. They fit well. They did well. Uh, I will, th this is definitely one where I 100% uh, leave it up to you because a 124 millimeter tall 2.2, I don't think the market is super, super wide. If you had something that wasn't full fenders, you'd, you'd probably be better off, but most people run it like it's a scale tire, but scale people aren't running a tire this big. You know, it. there's a lot of considerations to be made, a consideration atop a consideration. They did okay. They're not ghastly. There will be a link to them below. I will allow you to make that choice later. Will these find a, a place in the Canyon fleet? I don't know. As we sit currently, I don't think so but I'm not going to rule them out because they're bad I'm going to rule them out because we've got three rigs that run 2.2s total this, this is a 1.9 house so there it is there you have it there they are they're like they're crawler ish Meh. I don't know uh, for your consideration thank you for watching everybody please do comment below if you, if you have another junk view in mind, like if you've seen a tire that hasn't been tested, you've been browsing Amazon or whatever, let me know. Not just Pro X clones, Hyrax clones. We've seen all those clones. This clone is not a typical clone. Like I haven't seen another one of these. So if you have one of those, please do drop it in the comments. You might see it on this channel at some point in the future. Drop a like if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't. Do consider a channel membership uh, that's how, that's how we get things like, where's my hand? That's how we get things like this. Uh, the, the, the benevolence and the beneficence of the members of the 
Crawler Canyon supporter, the unofficial Patreon. Uh, they, they keep this channel going and they keep content like this available for you where they either buy it or I buy it. So you either don't have to or know that you should. Did that cover it? I feel like that covered it. All right, look at that backdrop though. Palo Verde, messy as hell, but look how pretty. Uh, I do thank you for watching. If I didn't before, I invite you to tune in for whatever comes next. I've lost my train of thought. In between now and when we meet again. Please, one and all, do your very best, everybody, to have a good one. And we will uh, we'll see you next time. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna end on just a, a palaverde. Look at that.